right, let's start coding now. Let's start with blocks. So what are blocks? In PSQL programming, you need to write all your code in blocks. Blocks are the executable code groups that are inside begin and keyword. While we start coding, the first thing we need to know is everything will be between begin and end keywords. But there is two different keywords that we need to know, declare and exception sections. Let's explain them one by one. Declare section is for declaring your variables, cursors, or user-defined exceptions. We are going to see all these in our further lessons. In the clear section, you say that I will use these things inside of my begin and end keyword. These are my variables. If you are familiar with some other languages, the logic is the same with the others. You say that I will use all these under the declaration part in my code in somewhere. If you do not need to declare anything in your code, then you don't need to write declare keyword. It's optional. But you cannot declare any variable or others in another part of your code. If you need to declare something, you need to do that in this section. Anyway, we are going to see these with many examples. And begin. With begin keyword, you say that I am now starting to code. I am not writing my code logic or business logic in here. All the operational things are done in here. This is necessary. You have to write a begin keyword in your code somewhere. Your code flow starts right after the begin keyword and continues operation downwards. And the exception section. Exception section is a bit complicated for now, but I am going to explain a bit now. As we learn now, your code starts working beginning from the begin keyword and continues downwards. If your code faces any problems while running, this is called an exception. If you do not handle this exception, your code crashes and terminates immediately. The rest of your code does not run and if you did any DML operations, they are all rolled back. So your whole code fails. Because of all these, for so many times, you will need to handle your exceptions. This keyword is optional. That means if you do not think that your code will have any exceptions, you don't need to write this keyword. But you should know that your coding mistakes, like writing with wrong text or forgetting to put a semicolon, for example, are not considered as exceptions. These are called as compile errors and your tool will force you to fix that before you run your code. Exceptions are for logical errors. The compiler cannot find exceptions. You face with it when your code is running. We are going to see all the exceptions and how to handle them in our further lessons. This was just for a prior knowledge. So let's pass the other keyword. And keyword. And means that your block has finished. You have done coding for this block. You have to put a semicolon after the end keyword. This keyword is necessary. You have to write this keyword at the end of your code. And you cannot write anything after this keyword. Actually, you can write if you have written another block inside this block, but anyway, this means that my block has finished. The last thing, these keywords must be written sequentially. That means the order must be declare, begin, exception and end. You cannot change the order of these keywords. This is important. Otherwise, you will have a compilation error. By the way, for the students who does not know programming before, Compilation means that your code is checked for any typos and errors before you run your code. This is called as compilation. If your code has any compilation errors, you cannot run your code. Your programming tool in our lesson, it is SQL Developer, will force you to solve these errors. 
Now let's write our first code now. We are going to make almost all of our codes in SQL Developer. SQL Developer is a very good tool for SQL and PLSQL development and it is completely free. So you can easily download it from Rockles website. Besides, it's a click and run program. So you don't need to set up anything. I personally recommend you to use SQL Developer but you can use any other tool too, it's up to you. Now let's open up our SQL Developer. Actually I will not explain how to set up your database or SQL Developer now. You must have done these steps before this course or this lesson. The installation and setup is added before this lesson. So if you haven't done yet, you need to get ready the database and the developer tool. If you have any problems anyway, you can write to me. I will try to help you. Anyway, let's connect to our database and create a new work document. We are going to use HR schema in our lessons. So I'm connecting with HR user. Now we can write our block in this empty document. The first thing we need to write is the declare section. Now we do not know anything about variables, cursors, etc. So I do not write anything inside declare section. The next thing I need to write is begin section. So I write begin. The next thing I can write is exception section, but exception cannot be written directly. You need to specify the type of the exception. As we do not know exceptions yet, now I will not write it. So the next thing I will write is the end section. Since we did not forget to write semicolon, we can run now. Before running, if you have any syntactical mistake, which means your code seems right. If you have any mistakes, this code will most probably be underlined in red color. Like as we can see in here. We have a red underline in here. That means we had something wrong. But we see that the underline is at the end of the end section. Do we have any error in here? You can either drag your mouse over this line or run the code to see the error. Do not scare to run your code because if your code does not work, all the operations are rolled back in Oracle. At least you can do this until you see the opposite information about that. Now let's point the error with cursor and we have the error now. Syntax error expected name and name will function call identify whatever. This error does not seem so understandable for me now. Let's run our code to see more detailed error message then. I select all these and click run. Let me expand this. Encounter the symbol and when expecting one of the following. Begin case, declare exit, for, go to or whatever. So if you don't see any line numbers in here, you can right click in here and select toggle line numbers because it's really useful when you are handling errors otherwise you can click in some part of your code and see the line columns numbers at the bottom right we click in here and see the line and columns in here but the first is faster of course Anyway, we have an error and says that encountered the symbol and when expecting another thing. If you see red underline in somewhere, this generally does not mean that the error is right there. But 
it is one or two lines up or down you should check very close of this line for example in here in here it seems there is an error at the end of the code but there is not the problem is we should write something between begin and end keywords we cannot leave it empty but we left it empty so let's write something in here in PSQL programming if you want to leave here empty or somewhere empty just write null in here since we do not know anything yet writing null will be best for now yes now our code is ready to run before running let's clear out the script output section let's run it now we can see that we have an output saying that anonymous block has completed because this is an anonymous block if you see this message that means your code has run successfully this was a dummy example just to show that what is an anonymous block and how you can run it you will see many examples about anonymous blocks soon now I think this is enough for the main things about blocks now let's continue with the types of PLSQL blocks there are three types of blocks every block must have a type there are three types of blocks for different purposes anonymous blocks procedures and functions now what we did before was anonymous blocks if you write a code into a worksheet and run it directly it is anonymous block anonymous blocks are the blocks that you don't save them if you save it into the database we will see how to save them then this is not an anonymous block and procedures in particular programming you generally do some business things that means you need to save a code you have written and run them over and over again like calculating these salaries for example you do that every month with the same way like these things procedures helps us procedures are named objects that includes SQL and PSQL in it we must give a name for the procedures to be able to call them later besides we can send in or get out some parameters with procedures anyway I won't go into so deep for now we will learn in details in further lessons PLSQL procedures are saved blocks that has SQL or PLSQL in it to do some job whenever we call it with its name functions are just like procedures the difference is functions must return a value but procedures does not have a return time so this is the end of anonymous blocks see you in our next lessons